Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at multi-arm bandit problem. We will understand what a multi-arm bandit problem is. It's a simple reinforcement learning technique where there is a need of exploration and exploitation. And we will look at the scenarios in which this exploration exploitation trade-off is needed. Uh, then we will look at some of the MAB algorithms. We will also look at scenarios in which industries uses MAB. We will look at two such interesting industrial problems which being solved using MAB algorithms. And finally, we will also cover uh, the contextual MAB, which is a type of MAB algorithm. MAB algorithm can be of two types, contextual MAB or non-contextual MAB. So we will cover that as well. Since we will be covering a lot of topics in this video, this video can be slightly longer, but this will be one stop video for all the uh, knowledge required to get started with MAB or even implement MAB for your industrial use case. So let's get started. Also, I will be covering the topics from variety of resources. What I will do, I will add the link of all these resources in the description section. So with that, let's get started. The multi-arm bandit what these multi-arm bandits are. Let's understand it with a scenario. Suppose you are new in a town and you want to eat good food. You have already some idea of some of the good restaurant that you have tried before and you got good food. What you can do is you can continue to go there in that restaurant to get your favorite mouth watery cuisine. But what might there may be better restaurants as well. But in case you start exploring for better restaurants, it can also happen you come across some worse cuisine of your life. So there is a trade off. You can keep on exploiting from the knowledge of good restaurants you have, but also you can explore in hope of a better long term reward. So in this kind of problem statements, we need a trade off between exploit, how much to exploit the current knowledge and how much to explore in hope of a better uh, cumulative reward. Next is how the term multi-arm bandit came and why for such kind of exploration, exploitation trade-off we use the term multi-arm bandit. So multi-arm bandit is a fundamental problem in reinforcement learning which comes when there is an uncertainty around decision making. And it originated from casinos. In casinos, you play uh, the machines which are called bandits. This kind of casino machines you play. Why are they called bandits? Because they are designed in a way that they steal your money. The setting is such that you can win sometimes. There is probability of winning, but overall, the always the casino wins. That's why they are called bandits. Now the problem becomes more interesting when you enter a casino and there is not just one bandit or one machine to play. There are multiple uh, arms or multiple bandits to be played. Now, what will be your strategy to maximize your reward? What will be your strategy to maximize your cumulative reward? And that is where the interesting concept of uh, multi-arm bandit which tries to trade off between exploration and exploitation arises. Suppose you have 10 different machines and you want to come up with an optimal strategy that maximize your highest possible reward. Now what you can do in this setup there is an agent and who is the agent? You are the agent. You are the playing the multi-arm bandits or multiple slot machines. Each bandit is synonymous of uh, one arm or one slot machine. You can select an arm and uh, you will get some reward and depending on that reward you will update your belief about that particular slot machine. This is a simple setup of uh, non-contextual bandit. Now why do we say that MAB is a simplified version of uh, reinforcement learning? We saw that we have we are the one who are playing, we select an arm or a slot machine, we get some reward and uh, here there is just one state whether you play or not. But when it comes to reinforcement learning, it's a super set where uh, there are players, agents which are playing, they take an action from the environment, they got get a reward and they update the state. Now we can think of 
uh, we can understand this reinforcement learning the super uh, set example with video games let's say you are playing a video game you take some action let's say you jumped and you got some reward that um, you got some points and all that becomes the reward so in this way reinforcement learning is used computers to teach them how to play or a self driving cars how how to drive one simple example can be tic tac toy that cross and uh, circle that you make uh, you may you uh, take some action you can play you suppose it's your turn you have to make a cross so you take some action and you get some reward whether you win or not and depending on that uh, you can uh, make the system learn how to play tic tac toe some interesting thing we also talked about state in the mab setup where when we went to casino we were playing machines there is a simple state either we play or we don't play right but in case of tic tac toe or computer games it can happen that once you are playing you are in between what is the current state of the board what is the current state of the game so that is the state so state refers to the current condition or context in which the mab algorithm operates and one more thing the reward can not always be instantaneous sometimes there can be delayed reward as well for example when you are playing tic tac toe you will only know you won or not at the end when the other person wins or you win so there can be delayed reward as well till now what we saw uh, we saw a simple mab setup and we saw that it can be generalized to reinforcement learning and the award or reward can sometimes be delayed adding few more details to it there can also be uh, need of formulating the problem not as a simple bandit problem but as a contextual bandit problem so what do mean by uh, we mean by context the same example of casino if you go to casino and you are playing the slot machines but we have figured out that the slot machines behavior changes on different days of the week and different time of the day so depending on the day of the week and uh, time of the day you can decide which machine to play and that becomes your context so in contextual bandit you take an action depending on the context which can be your user features or in this case the example that i gave it can be time of the day or day of the week that becomes the context so mab setup we understood how it can be generalized uh, to reinforcement learning we looked at delayed rewards and we also looked at context need of contextual bandit when the context is needed and we have seen in all these things there is a need to trade off between exploitation and exploration we exploit the arm or the slot machine which we know gives maximum reward but in between we also keep on trying new machines in the hope that in future that can maximize my total cumulative reward next what we will do is we will look at some of the mab multi arm bandit algorithms that is if you have to implement your own mab uh, how can you implement it the first one being epsilon greedy in which what you do is you randomly generate a probability and you also uh, de define a hyperparameter epsilon let's say epsilon is 5% so with 5% probability you will explore and 95% probability you will exploit so 5% of the times you will just explore the other arms in the hope that some other arms may be better and you don't have the correct estimate of reward it can bring for you in long term so 5% of the times you keep exploring and other 95% times you exploit or use the best arm you know till now this is the best arm let's see some more mathematics around it so with probability epsilon you choose to explore and with probability 1 minus epsilon you exploit by selecting the best arm with highest estimated reward now how the suppose you play an arm you will get some reward right either you will win or loss or you will get some reward how to update your uh, mean estimated reward for that arm right once like till this point you have a mean estimated reward for uh, that arm now you again played it you got a reward now how to update your prior belief of mean estimated reward so let's qa be the mean estimated reward of arm at time t till now the qa is the value of your mean estimated reward a because for this arm for each arm you will have its own mean estimated reward na means this arm has been played any number of times till now rt means you played it just now and you got some reward right 
just now you played it and you got some reward then how will be the mean estimated reward be updated mean estimated reward for time t plus 1 will be mean estimated reward till the current point of time and we have played it n a number of times so whatever be the mean reward we multiplied it by n a because that is the total uh, cumulative reward till last time period and we just now played it and we got a reward of rt and this divided by n a plus 1 because we played one more uh, time so if you see it's a simple simply a weighted average uh, what was the cumulative reward till last time stamp and we have played it n times we played one more time so cumulative reward will get added by rt and we divide it by total n a n plus 1 which is total number of times we have now played it for n plus 1 so this becomes the updated uh, estimated mean reward for next time interval this is how the uh, reward update happens once you have selected the arm and how you select the arm uh, with 5% or epsilon probability you always explore and remaining uh, times you exploit the best arm known till this time so that is how uh, the epsilon greedy algorithm works i also want to uh, tell you that there are variants of epsilon greedy as well uh, so we can maybe look at the wikipedia page yes so some variants of epsilon greedy is uh, epsilon first grid strategy where for when you start your mab for the uh, instead of doing 95 percent or 1 minus epsilon percent exploit and epsilon percent explore in the initial first iterations you just ex explore so that is epsilon first initially you just explore then you start exploiting second is epsilon decreasing strategy we know that it will take some time for the uh, system to converge to the best arm right that's why we are doing exploration exploitation but the idea of epsilon decreasing strategy is after some point of time once we know that convergence has happened try to decay epsilon with time so maybe we start with five percent or maybe even ten percent explore but over the time keep on reducing the epsilon 10 to 5 5 to 2 2 to 1 so something like that like you can just make epsilon a function of time as well so that is epsilon decreasing strategy and there are few more uh, strategy around epsilon greedy with that now let's ne let's move to the uh, next one which is upper confidence bound as the name suggests in upper confidence bound uh, we calculate upper confidence associated with each arm it's a different strategy to balance between exploration and exploitation in ucb algorithm for each arm we select its upper confidence bound and upper confidence bound is a combination of exploitation reward and exploration bonus exploitation reward is just the estimated mean reward till this point of time similar to what we have seen in epsilon greedy the estimated mean reward for each arm exploration bonus on the other hand is a function of number of times the arm has been selected if the arm has been selected more number of times then exploration bonus is less if it's selected for less number of times then its exploration bonus is more the reason being if an arm has been selected more number of times we should have a good measure of its estimated mean reward but if it has been selected very few number of times its actual reward may be different from our estimated mean reward so that's the main idea and uh, the idea is also uh, backed from statistical theory that as you draw more and more sample you should be uh, more confident about the distribution so if you have tried it more number of times your um, estimated mean reward should be more correct but if you have tried less number of times there may be your uh, your estimated and actual there may be a delta and so your exploration bonus should be high and uh, how it does that for each arm we calculate its uh, uh, estimated mean reward till this point of time this is same as uh, the one we saw in epsilon greedy what is the estimated mean reward and it also gets updated in the same way while the exploration bonus is a function of uh, times what, what the current time stamp is and number of time it has been tried if the current time stamp is let's say 100 and it has been tried only one time then it will be uh, log of 100 square root of log of 100 if we ignore the log square root of 100 means 10 while if it has been tried 50 times then 100 by 52 so square root is 1.4 so 
when it was tried 50 times we got a value of root 2 1.4 but it when it was tried only once we got a value of 10 so 10 is greater than 1.4 right so basically if an arm has been uh, tried lesser number of times its exploration bonus is high and if it's tried more number of times its exploration bonus is low and if if i have to explain each uh, term once more um, then qa is is the estimated mean reward and uh, c is just a positive constant which controls the level of exploration higher the value of c higher we want to explore and log on log of t is just the natural logarithm of time stamp t but the current time stamp is irrespective of how many times the arm has been tried across like how many times we have played it in total across all arms that is the time t and na is number of times this arm has been tried and the best arm for that time period which will win is is the maximum value of ucb of each arm for each arm we will calculate this upper confidence bound which is a sum of uh, exploitation reward plus exploration bonus and one which has highest uh, reward or highest ucb wins and the idea is that with time if some arm is not tried then its exploration bonus will keep on increasing next we'll go to the next algorithm which is thomson sampling so thomson sampling it's a probabilistic strategy uh, so till now we have been saying that each arm has one mean estimated reward which is a single value but what if i can say that the reward distribution is not a single value but it's a distribution each arm has its own distribution so it's a probabilistic strategy that balances between exploration and exploitation the algorithm maintains a probability distribution of each arm and the arm is selected based on the reward that we sample and the key idea is to use bayesian inference uh, to update the beliefs that is the uh, posterior of each distribution will be updated depending on the prior and likelihood and we'll see that in details so how the algorithm works is there is an initialization phase where we initialize each arm first and um, a common choice is to use beta distribution why because when we have only two outputs success or failure uh, beta distribution is an ideal distribution so each arm we can say that it has a beta distribution to start with and also uh, beta distribution has two parameters alpha and beta if we set alpha equal to 1 beta equal to 1 for all the arms it's like we are starting with a uniform distribution that uh, the probability of win can be anything between 0 and 1 and every arm has uniform distribution so we are saying that each arm has equal probability to win to begin with initialization in sampling step we sample a value from the probability distribution and uh, the arm selection how it happens since we have sampled a value from the beta distribution of each arm which is the beta distribution is denoting the reward distribution so we take a sample value and the arm which has highest value wins and just doing this balances between exploration and exploitation the reason being the reason being uh, we are starting with a uniform distribution each, each arm has a uniform distribution but as we keep on getting more and more updates about the reward or success associated with drawing samples from that arm like which arm is more successful or which arm has more probability to win we will be more confident of the distribution now once the distribution converges and i draw a value then it's uh, since the standard deviation of the distribution reduces there is more probability that we will draw a value near to its mean estimated reward and the one which has higher mean estimated reward uh, more it will win more number of times and for the arms where we are still not very confident they will have a high standard deviation and since because of high standard deviation it can happen once in a while we can get a, a higher outlier is value and that can also win and for when that wins we will play it more number of times and its distribution also over time will converge so that's the main idea so um, we draw the reward sample reward drawn from each arm the one which has highest reward wins and we observe the reward and we uh, update the distribution and this is how the update happens we said right that initially we will start with alpha and beta of one because that's a uniform distribution and if we played it n number of times in let's say one iteration the number of time it succeeded it got the success then alpha become will become alpha plus success and beta will become beta plus n minus success which is number of failures and why this update works is i will show the proof 
uh, we are updating the posterior distribution of each arm posterior is uh, directly proportional to likelihood and prior we assumed right that the prior distribution follows a uh, beta distribution so beta distribution is this b, uh, p to the power alpha minus 1 and 1 minus p to the power beta minus 1 this is uh, the p, uh, like you can see that pdf is something of this form now for the likelihood we play the arm right we can assume that it's a binomial distribution because it's success and failure the, so the PDF and or PMF or binomial distribution of this form where P to the power of success and 1 minus P to the power of failures which is N minus success. Now posterior is a, uh, a multiplication of likelihood and prior. So the, these terms will get added and you will get uh, alpha minus 1 plus success, beta minus 1 plus N minus success. And when we started with the beta distribution, the form, the form is something of this form, alpha minus 1, beta minus 1. And here also, if we keep the minus 1 separate, it becomes alpha plus success, beta plus N minus success, right? And that is what we updated. In this way, the posterior update can happen. And also, uh, for different kind of success failure scenarios, the assumption for the prior distribution can be different but the posterior needs to be updated as we play more and more of it. The key idea behind Thomson sampling is to balance between exploration and exploitation by sampling from probability distribution and it combines the power of Bayesian inference with exploration and exploitation trade-off making it a strong approach for many real-world applications. Now one more thing that I want to discuss is in the uh, blog they have also shown a comparison of the three strategies. One interesting thing is that you see epsilon greedy is hard to beat because it always uh, has some epsilon values of fixed exploration while for UCB or uh, Thomson sampling the advantage or property of the algorithm you can say is that uh, the one advantage of UCB or even Thomson sampling over epsilon greedy is that it does not require a parameter that always we will explore uh, epsilon number of times the algorithm automatically adjusts depending on the level of uh, ex, uh, uncertainty in the reward distribution of each arm if if we have more uncertainty then explore will be kind of more but if we have very surely know that this arm is the best arm then there is more chances of it winning the um, winning over that iteration so if if we have more certainty over the reward distribution then exploration will be less in UCB and Thomson sampling so when uh, they compared the three algorithms over different problems they found that epsilon greedy is hard to beat initially because it finds the best arm because of that continuously continuous explore that's why the cumulative reward is um, lesser in the beginning but over a long term the cumulative reward increases because it always keeps on uh, exploring uh, there we can use decaying epsilon or something but that's one thing while Thomson and UCB uh, both performs well they have high regret in the beginning but over time their regret reduces and Thomson sampling seems more stable because its cumulative reward over long period of uh, time is more and regret is lesser. So this is the regret. So regret is lesser. We can say that reward is more, right? So yeah. Uh, next we will look at when do companies in which scenarios company use a MAB setup. The alternative could be instead of doing setting an MAB, uh, we want to know that out of the 10 arms, which is better, right? So we can run an AB, AB test where there will be 10 variants and the variant winning is the best variant or the best arm to play. But when do companies go with an AB setup and when do companies go with this exploration exploitation setup to eventually converge to the best arm? Uh, let's look at that. So I, I have seen in industries these are the scenarios in which uh, companies go with MAB setup. So the first scenario is swift decision making in risk prone situations. In situations where we need to make a swift or fast decision is crucial such as clinical trials. Relying on simple A-B test is very risky because uh, rapid convergence is needed and a wrong treatment if given to bunch of users in an A-B test is very risky. We just want to give uh, start with giving the treatment to few individuals and as soon as whichever uh, arm or whichever treatment is doing better then converge towards it. 
This is especially true when determining the comparative effectiveness of let's say two drugs, Covaxin and Covisil, we, we want to find which one is better or for a particular specific user cohort which is better. It, to run an A-B test, we will have to first allocate audience, run it for a specific amount of time in which the results can be statistically significant. Uh, right, but instead of that, we can start with an MAB setup for faster convergence and swift decision making. So in this cases, MAB is used. It's also used as a cost efficient A-B test alternative. Suppose you want to know that out of the two ads campaign, the Coca-Cola wants to know that this poster versus that poster or out of the 10 poster, which one is better. Now what they can do, they can do an A-B test, but they will have to show it to enough number of people and there will be a cost affected with these ads. So whenever there is more cost affected with A-B exploration, uh, companies go ahead with uh, MAB setup where there is faster convergence and more money will be spent on the variant which is doing actually better determining which ad variant performs better essential but the cost associated with traditional exploration AB is high so first scenario risk prone situation second cost efficient AB test alternative third one is adapting to changing user preferences in dynamic scenarios what can happen the prefer people preferences can change over time whatever is best today may not be the best after some time so in this kind of situation mab is a perfect uh, suit if they are well suited because they efficiently or they do continuous exploration and exploitation so in case there is a drift they will explore and eventually converge towards the best new minima or better minima or of that time and one more scenario in which people go with MAB is when AB testing of all possible variants is impractical or exponentially large. For example, uh, for a music app out of the 15 modules, you want to know that which rank ordering is better. Now, how many number of rank orderings are possible if there are 15 modules, there are 15 uh, factorial combinations or permutations are available. Now we can't do an AB test of so many combinations right so but multi-arm bandit what it will do it will find it's a superior alternative which will efficiently find the ideal ranking by just calculating the mean estimated reward and that greedy approach of just ranking them based on decreasing order of mean estimated reward will optimize for the best conversion so in these scenarios people generally use uh, mab instead of uh, ab testing and I will also show you two real use cases where uh, companies have used uh, MAB instead of AB testing. We'll first start with Geo7 which is a mobile music app. Uh, they have used MAB. So I will share the link of this blog also in the description section but I will quickly show you what they did. In Geo7 it's a music app. Uh, they use contextual bandit for personalization. They have uh, 15 different modules like new releases, top shows, editorial picks and so on. You can see that, right? Um, they have different modules, daily mixes, recommended artists, editorial picks, radio stations and so on. There are 15 modules and doing a A-B test to find what is the best rank ordering is not uh, uh, possible and it's not uh, like computationally uh, practical. So what they did, they employed multi-arm bandit. They started with a non-contextual uh, MAB setup and finally move towards a contextual setup where contextual I mean uh, the best rank ordering will differ depending on the uh, user profile but it's through an MAB so there will be a, uh, uh, a contextual MAB setup which will find that for this set of users what is the right rank ordering while some other use set of users what is the rank, right rank ordering and they have also mentioned that they used MAB also because uh, the user ta taste keeps on changing depending on uh, time with time it changes or uh, with some festive season it can change and so on so MAB the uh, good part about that is it continuously explores and if there is any drift it converges to the new best or new best ranking the second example is actually a paper from uh, Expedia if I am not wrong yeah, it's a paper from Expedia and they have used multi-arm bandit for accelerated or fast experimentation so they have told that till now the gold standard for evaluating an algorithm is a b test and a b test is used because it's an unbiased way of testing 
while there are number of issues with ab testing the first and foremost being it takes longer time and there is cost associated with it cost because you will show that variant to good number of users which and run it for good number number amount of time such that the results are statistically significant while the other way of uh, alternative of doing an ab test could be an M multi arm bandit setup where uh, what we do is uh, we start with equal traffic to all the variants but over the time very quickly the traffic allocation changes depending on the uh, depending on the arms performance and traffic will keep on changing and decreasing depending on the arm performance taking into account the uncertainty of each variant but they have also told that uh, mab can't replace traditional ab testing the reason being in mab setup we have seen till in all the algorithms there is a reward right and that reward can be short term reward like uh, in case of uh, testing a recommendation system it can be something like um, how the ctr click through rate is changing so you can have a reward based on ctr but the problem is in ab test when you run it for uh, a bunch of audience for uh, given amount of time you just don't look at short term conversion ctr but you also looked at over the period how the overall retention was different cross category interaction was and you look at multiple long term metrics as well while mab only looks at short term metrics or two three metrics in which you can create a reward but you can't create a reward based on all the metrics right so what they say that instead of just replacing ab testing with mab what we can do is we can do an accelerated testing and this is the setup where so what they are saying if we have to do an ab it would it will take 6 months given that each variant is run sequentially for 4 weeks so what they are suggesting instead of doing that we can run a mab with same number of audience uh, equally dividing the audience into each variant and running an mab and MAB converges very fast in one or two weeks, right? From MAB, we will take the winning variant and only the winning variants we will use for the AB testing. So they are saying in a way that we have multiple variants. Uh, so we don't have to do an AB with all the variants. We can just pick the two, three best variants through an MAB and then do an AB of those variants. In that way, MAB can help in accelerating the time for a AB experiment. So they are not saying MAB is a replacement of AB, but it, though both can work together for faster convergence. So yeah, yeah those are the two uh, use cases we saw from industry where people have used MAB and we also looked at the different use cases or scenarios where people use or industry uses MAB with uh, the first one being in risk prone situations, in cost uh, efficient AB alternative and second third is most important when the user preference keeps on changing there is there may be a future drift and last one um, when ab can lead to many variants or exponentially large impractical ab there we can use mab and one last topic that i also want to cover in many of the cases i said that uh, like geo savan used contextual mab but all the algorithms we saw ucb thomson and epsilon greedy are non contextual mabs while how what are these contextual mabs and how are they built so i will show one contextual mab algorithm um, and this is the one this is a very good uh, blog on contextual bandit and the another good part about this blog is they have also given the code uh, of this and the code is really simple which you can also uh, test it this is the code that can be used to run contextual MAB. Now, what I want to cover last is about this contextual MAB, which is the Lin UCB. Uh, so, contextual MABs goes one more granular at the context level and takes a decision to select which arm. And uh, we will look at Lin UCB. To understand Lin UCB, let's understand a situation where we have users and users will have their features, right? These are the user vectors. And Let's say we are solving for a news app which have four type of news or four type of sections. The first news is catering towards retirement policies and politics. The second is movie news. The third is tech news. And the last one is sports news. There are these four sections or uh, modules. Now, which module to show first? We want to find that for better conversion, which should be ranked order first, right? Now, but if you will see the older people, they may like 
दे मे लाइक मोर पॉलिसीज रिटायरमेंट पॉलिटिक्स दिस काइंड ऑफ सेक्शन वाइल यंग पीपल मे लाइक स्पोर्ट्स और टेक न्यूज मोर राइट सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट देर इज वन रैंक ऑर्डरिंग विच इज परफॉर्मिंग बेस्ट बट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द कंटेक्स एंड दैट कंटेक्स हेयर इज द यूजर कंटेक्स सो वी हैव द यूजर वैक्टर्स एंड वट वी वॉन्ट टू डू वी वॉन्ट टू लर्न द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ इच आर्म हेयर आर्म इज वन ऑफ द न्यूज सेक्शन राइट फॉर इच आर्म वी वॉन्ट टू लर्न इट्स पैरामीटर्स with which we can find that uh, for this user which is the best section and now the, as the name suggests linear ucb it's it's based on an algorithm which is very similar to linear regression if x is a user vector for each arm we need to find its coefficient its parameter you can say think of it as coefficient the thetas for each uh, arm and how that is done you have the user vector x and you have the Uh, arms coefficient which is theta and everywhere there is a subscript of a subscript of a means this is for that particular arm and similarly we will have uh, theta for all the arms and also for user we have an arm because this user played a particular arm whichever arm it played it will get assigned to that arm uh, while we find the parameters and uh, if you know ridge regression which is a variant of linear regression with regularization the closed form solution of ridge regression is something like this which is x transpose x plus lambda i whole inverse x transpose y and i is the identity matrix x is the uh, training data which is the uh, you can think of here as user vectors and y is the uh, target variable and the closed form solutions to find the value of theta for arm is also same as this which is dt d plus i whole inverse dt c and i am not saying the subscript a because we know for each arm its head is it has its own uh, parameters now this d and x are same thing d is same as x both denoting the user vector c is the uh, reward we got when when that user played that arm or when we saw that particular news to that particular user what was the reward we got Uh, uh, the the actual reward that is c and uh, subscript a is denoting the arm so uh, this equation can be simplified as a inverse b where a is this part and b is this part right a is the first part uh, dt d plus i and uh, second part which is dtc uh, is the uh, second part and as i already said d and x are synonymous they are the same thing now Uh, we know that the parameter of that arm theta coefficients can be found in this way but if we also go with the statistical theory uh, of distribution we can say that the coefficient the theta it's it's not a it's definitely a point estimate but there is also some variance associated with its calculation so uh, the coefficients we can say has a mean of theta whichever we just derived uh, this is the value of theta but also there is a uncertainty in estimation of theta and that uncertainty or variance can be given by a inverse a inverse subscript a means a inverse and for arm uh, that arm for each arm we will calculate but uh, the uncertainty around that theta's estimate can be given by uh, uh, can, can be given by a inverse which is uh, which is dt d whole inverse right so so what we saw that theta we have calculated but there is also some uncertainty associated with it now if in the coefficient calculation there is some uncertainty or obviously in the reward calculation also there is some uncertainty so if there is uncertainty associated in theta's estimate there is also some uncertainty associated with the reward estimate to understand the uncertainty in reward but just let's look at one of the concept that if u is a random variable we know its variance is e of u and variance is variance of u and if we multiply a constant a with u the expectation that mean changes by a into the mean value e u and variance changes by a square into variance of u now this simple fundamental of statistics can be applied here as well we know that to uh, get the reward we multiply the user uh, vector x with theta so mean estimated reward will become uh here a is the user vector so a into eu so x into theta and variance will become uh the a square into variance of u whatever be the variance we will it will get multiplied by a square a is here x so x square into variance of uh what is the variance variance is a inverse so it will become x square into a inverse but since it's a vector form we can write is at x square as 
x a inverse x right since it's a vector form and we take a root because we are not interested in variance we are interested in standard deviation because standard deviation and mean are comparable so yeah that's it so for each arm if the user plays it this is the exploitation reward which is the mean reward and there is some uncertainty associated with the reward and this is the uncertainty which is uh, x a inverse x and um, square root because this is the uncertainty in form of standard deviation alpha similar is the exploration amount it's a factor just how much exploration we want to do if high means higher exploration so this becomes the uh, total ucb because we know ucb of an arm is exploitation reward plus exploration bonus this is the estimated mean reward and this is the uncertainty associated with it and the arm which has highest uh, ucb highest this value will be selected the uh, the higher alpha means higher emphasis placed on uh, placed on exploration so that's the lin ucb algorithm and as i was saying um, that the code is also available one more thing in linear regression we pass the data and estimate the theta but what happens there is uh, we have the whole data available with us right but here the user keeps on playing and we keep on updating the thetas so the formula is same just that it iteratively as we play more and more we update the uh, thetas so this is the algorithm the uh, the git code is also available which i have myself tried if you would like me to show with an example how over the time contextual bending is conversing taking a sim simple problem i can do that let me know in the comment section so uh, mostly that's it in this video where we covered a lot of things we covered what mab is uh, the mab setup how it converges to the best converting arm and it explores keep on uh, if there is any drift with time it adjusts for that as well and it's a simple setup of reinforcement learning we looked at non-contextual mab algorithm epsilon greedy ucb and thomson sampling we also looked at in which scenarios industries use mab we looked at two actual industry use cases where mab is used and finally we looked at contextual mab as well lin ucb with that i think you are good to implement your own uh, mab for your industrial problem hope you like the video please uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye